Hello. Okay, that's good. Um, so good evening, everyone. Um, I'm very happy to be here today. It's because it's been a very ex like happy to be among all of you, but at the same time, it's been a very exciting week um, at Civic Innovation Network. Um, we we are celebrating our first anniversary. We started last year around this time, and yeah, it's been a quite a quite a journey. Um, Personally, I, um, I left India six years ago, and I've been living in Brussels for five years. Uh, why Brussels? Uh, well, it was just happened to be that I, I did an internship here and then met WeShare, which is a um, global community fostering and nurturing collaborative society. And in the first year, um, in the very first year in Brussels, um, I, I got engaged with WeShare and then became a WeShare connector in Brussels. Um, and as a connector, I was mapping the local community, researching the cases, uh, meeting people, fostering connections, um, and, and working around collaborative economy um, movement. And it was during this time that uh, I felt that there was this need of a project uh, that could bind all the different projects, movements, um, cooperatives in Brussels, and, and do something at the city scale. Um, also, at the same time, a few facts that not only amused us, but pushed us to do something at the city scale, um, where like by 2023, eight in 10 people in Brussels, Brussels-based people, will be of different nationality than Belgians. And to make this diversity a force, Brussels needs to become an open innovation platform that can uh, allow those skills uh, development. It's the fourth richest region in Europe, uh, yet 30% of its population is living under the poverty line. The, the local institution is very complex and fragmented, it's difficult to understand. Um, it, there's quite a corruption in, in Brussels, yet at the same time, it has the highest density of civic initiatives in Europe. Now this is the contrast that gives us and pushes pushes us to build those business models that are, that are more inclusive and fair. Um, and that's why last year, along with a few other individuals, uh, we, we launched Civic Innovation Network with its pioneering experiment in Brussels. With Civic Innovation Network, our goal is to reinforce the uh, urban resilience through a multi-stakeholder collaboration. Basically, to, to make startups, initiatives, public actors, private actors work together and to see if they are compatible and complementary to tackle an urban challenge. If you look at the last decade, we have, pos we have positioned technology and startups as, as the hero that will save the world. But in spite of bringing the equilibrium that our society is in need of, this, hero this heroic position has created more ego, competition and exploitation. A very interesting tale that dates back to some 50,000 years ago uh, gives us some, some insight on what, what really went wrong in this silo heroic uh, worshipping. So around 50,000 years ago, uh, it was the time uh, known for its um, innovation. Um, and it was this time when humans were able to differentiate, differentiate themselves from other species on the earth. Now, if you think of it, it was not, we were not able to differentiate ourselves with other species uh, because of our inferior body or weaker senses, but rather because we were able to cooperate and communicate. We were able to take care of our groups. And this development of the multipurpose brain led us to collaborate. But we came so far in the journey that today we forgot the basic differential nature of humans, the ability to collaborate. And hence, at Civic Innovation Network, we really believe that multi-stakeholder collaboration is the key to move forward. Um, and we propose to move from startups to impact joint ventures. An impact joint venture is a co-created mission with a systemic impact. With an IGV, uh, it allows complementary actors to move from silo to systemic visioning. Uh, basically, uh, if you think of the challenges of our city, from uh, youth unemployment to healthcare to pollution to education, 
they all rely and are influenced by a number of factors, actors, policies, um, and conditions. And hence, they do demand a collective intelligence to have a substantive change. What we do with an impact joint venture, we gather different actors around a table. Uh, we design collaboration scenarios with them. Uh, this way, they, 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 they have a bigger impact of the action they are doing as an individual. They, they mutualize their resources and hence reduce their cost. Um, let me give you two examples, concrete examples of an impact joint venture we are working in Brussels. The first one is called Food Logistic Hub. And basically, the, uh, there are five projects in Brussels that have come together to work on this impact joint venture. And they are centralizing all the food surplus and sh uh, using a shared kitchen where they will transform and process the collected food and redistribute it. And, and basically, the, the projects that have collaborated on, on this venture come from different sectors. There are food waste entrepreneurs. There is cargo bike uh, del uh, delivery uh, uh, initiative. There is a collective uh, working on empty buildings in Brussels. There is a collective working with refugees on finding them work. So it's it's really a, a different sectoral coming together and, and finding a solution which is more systemic. The second uh, example of an impact joint venture is the mobile fab lab for schools. Um, and basically, what will happen here, fab bus and fab, bi uh, fab velo bikes will go to different schools and provide educational services, uh, technological educational services. This one is pretty interesting in a context. So basically, in the summer uh, this year, there was a call by the region of Brussels uh, for the mobile fab lab. And we managed to gather uh, some eight to 10 actors to, uh, to work together and answer this call together. Um, and Aymal is one of the actors that participated in, in answering this call with other actors. And they won the call, and they'll be launching the, new pro the mobile Fab Lab project of 600,000 euros in Brussels for the next two years. And basically, through this project, of course, they will be delivering the open production knowledge uh, from inspired from the maker movement in schools, but as well as build more projects that can bind schools in two different communes in Brussels. So what happens is when you bring these different actors around the table, it's not only they see the benefit of collaboration, but the right questions are asked. If you think of um, uh, the ecosystem of our cities, there are so many impact joint ventures that can be incubated and can have tremendous positive impact on the city. Uh, however, the, the progress and acceleration of these impact joint ventures rely a lot on the tools and methods we provide. Um, these tools and methods uh, vary from ecosystem knowledge mapping to uh, physical facilitation expertise, as well as shared governance and open value accounting. We do think that oh, value creation and distribution is the key when it comes to build a multi-stakeholder uh, consortium, and hence it should be encrypted in its DNA from the beginning. At the same time, the other tools are about legal, uh, open legal agreements, legal contracts, and financial vehicle. If, if we want to make everyone feel secure and share responsibility and leverage on more resources, each impact joint venture it has its own legal uh, status and, and contracts. This also allows external uh, fundings, partnerships, and investments. And the other two, in, uh, in fact, the, the last two um, tools which we are also trying to incorporate in the, in, in the impact joint venture package is uh, impact assessment and civic agora. The first one, impact assessment, is of course, it's, it's must to see what the impact of each venture is so that we can um, then work with the city on, on, on new models and new partnerships and new cost reduction structures. And the second one is Civic Agora. Basically, uh, through Civic Agora, we want to empower the citizens uh, to have more active voice in building the future of the city. So each impact joint venture that is the co-created mission will be brought to uh, citizens through civic agoras. And, and through this, the, the proactive citizens in the city can, can, um, can have a more active voice and not just uh, mere voting, 
um, as well as the projects can have a direct access to to the to its uh, audience, which is which is the citizens. And in fact, tomorrow, as Eve had mentioned in the beginning of the day, we will be uh, organizing a participatory session uh, in a format of fishball, which also represents a civic agora where we will all gather and and discuss what we had heard we have heard today, um, and see concretely what can be built from there on. And basically, uh, it's it's uh, it's open for everyone. There's just no roles or titles. We all will be citizen tomorrow in this civic agora. Um, however, at the same time, we are we are also um, it's right now we are working with projects and grassroots. But at the same time, this change cannot happen alone, and that's why uh, simultaneously we are also working with a few public institutions in Brussels. Um, on, on, on some missions uh, that require uh, cross-collaboration. And we, we believe in insiders and we want to work with translators. Basically, what we, who we call a translator is an individual working within an organization that understands the workflow, that understands the, uh, the, the goals, etc., and can talk to social innovation projects and hence translate this into allocation of resources, um, support on R&D, and become an active stakeholder. In the future, um, dis um, we, what, where we want to go is to, is, to, is to open this up in a co-op-like structure that could allow the city to look into a mirror and understand that a city is a complex system and there are a lot of interdependencies that needs to be taken care of. And this structure will be co-owned and governed by its members, where it will be it will it will be it will take into account all the stakeholders, uh, where grassroots can be compatible and complementary to to institutions. Um, and going further, um, of course, with the help, uh, through open source and transparency, we are documenting everything we do. And if tomorrow there is a solution on education, um, um, uh, education topic in, in Madrid, why not bring it in Brussels? And similarly, uh, if there is something on energy efficiency that's working and has a good impact in Brussels, let's take it to other cities and replicate it. The last slide where I, where I would say that at CIN we are, um, we are sure and we are convinced that the way forward is to uh, explore collaborations in its new ways and basically um, involve all the actors in the city because it's only possible when everyone comes together and believes in making the city a better city. That let's put all the processes that different worlds, are, uh, different movements and organizations around the world have been tinkering to name it open source, uh, um, collective intelligence, future of work, peer-to-peer uh, -peer economy. Let's put it into practice at, in small experiments. Thank you. I'm sure there will be questions, but please wait till the microphone reaches you. Otherwise, people elsewhere don't hear us. It's coming. Uh, the last week in Milano, we did like a meeting and symposium called the Common Fair, and that was the attempt to um, to have like. Um, a gathering uh, of different actors uh, in order also to 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 speak about this ecosystem of uh, different stakeholders uh, in order to conceive uh, like a new platform for uh, a welfare uh, co-designed by the people and uh, and all the stakeholders in the city and so on um, and also this initiative uh, was a uh, your promoted by a European program uh, called Common Fair. Uh, so the question is, and you mentioned 700,000 euro uh, for this um, uh, program. Uh, the question is, uh, do you think uh, that this uh, reorganization of uh, the public, uh, in a way, welfare system uh, um, in this 
ecological uh, perspective is so much depending on uh, public funding or if there's no public funding, uh, would you do the same work or would you able to do the same uh, uh, work? Also maybe watching to the future if, uh, or about the country, for example, not uh, Belgium, uh, that has no this funding. Definitely. I mean, in this specific case, there was a call and, and the actors gathered together and answered the call. But if I look in other um, impact joint ventures, there is, there is no call, there is, there is no funding right now straight available. But still the projects are coming together, uh, starting something. And in this way itself, they are reducing their cost. There's a deficit. If you, if you look, if, instead of doing uh, the action individually, if you do it at a collective level, you reduce the cost. And then, of course, the idea is to not just rely on the public funding. That's, of course, one of the key, uh, if it's there, well and good. But there are, of course, other, um, uh, why not, private investments uh, with, in a, in a ethical, uh, on an ethical ground. And uh, yeah, so there are other, I wouldn't say that if public funding is not there, this would not happen. Yes, we exactly. We, uh, I mean, our project is also on open collective, and I think Xavier was here this afternoon, and he spoke about the maybe he spoke about the platform, um, and uh, this platform also allows these ventures to raise uh, funding. So definitely, there is uh, there are other crowd investments and crowd funding options. I'm here with Mike. Um, yeah, I got two questions. First of all, um, how did you come up with these ideas and concepts and like how you developed into this fully structured organization? And uh, what challenges have you faced thus far? Thank you. So the first one, um, uh, how we come up with scenarios is, in the beginning we were trying to do it ourselves with the, with the help of, we all represent different networks, so in the past years we have been doing a lot of mapping, um, ecosystem knowledge. So the food logistic hub was like sort of instigated by us. But then on, it was, it was so obvious in the city that um, it would come from different people. We call them scenarist who comes up with a scenario. And yeah, ba so basically these people uh, say, I'm trying to resolve a challenge on, um, um, so there's a Fab Lab guy who wants to do something for school because there's a lot of waste. And he's like, but I cannot do this alone. So can you help me find different projects? So we are like, okay, which are the projects? Maybe we need designers, maybe we need people uh, with, with more skills, we need schools. And so I think someone just comes up with an issue and then we try to find different uh, projects. So it was a quite learning by doing the process. In the beginning, we just had a, a physical facilitation uh, based on design thinking and system thinking. Uh, but later on, we realized that's not enough. Uh, people won't stay if there is no legal agreements, the, if there is no shared governance, if there is no value accounting. So slowly, we started adding. As I said, in the future, we also want to add impact assessment and civic agora. So. Yeah, uh, uh, I have a, a, a question. Uh, the the Brussels situation is uh, a bit s specific because, as you say, the political landscape is it's very fragmented with a lot of institutions. Yes. Um, and uh, you are now in a, in a position where uh, many of these uh, public institutions and public actors are commissioning you uh, missions to Definitely. put together people. Yes. Uh, but the risk is also that you get an instrument of this uh, political and public institution uh, to just have a layer of participation. No? Okay, no, definitely. So actually, that's a very good question. As I said, that this is not possible alone and we have to work with public institutions. So recently, uh, one of the public agency um, asked us to, um, to facilitate a day uh, where we can think on um, 
well the story is very different basically they wanted uh, they, we were in a meeting and they were discussing um, of starting a, a fab lab because there's a there's a huge funding by the city of brussels and they were just thinking of what machines we should get in this fab lab and we were like that's not the question you should start with you need to there are so many fab labs in brussels the question needs to be how do you work with these fab labs what already exist so basically they asked yes definitely let's do a one day workshop and in fact we did that workshop and it was quite a um, reality check for them that basically this is not the start uh, where they should go on um they did get back to us that they want to continue this discussion forward um i mean for us we of course there is always a risk that is it uh, is it just a mission that we are commissioned and we are we don't know where it is going but at the same time it's 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 a risk we have to take in if we want all the actors to be on board so but yeah the idea is to 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 be neutral and work with everyone and not forget the core of the dna what cin is so yeah okay thank you <laughs>